Multiple gestation means multiple fetuses. It means twinning. You can get twins in two ways. Either it's multiple eggs released, as in clomiphene induction, that are separate fertilizations that happen to implant at the same time, or you can have one fertilization, one egg sperm combination that splits. What you're going to have to be able to do by the end of this lecture is identify the different types of twins that there are and the risk they confer to the fetuses. This is going to sound very confusing because we're going to use very long words you're probably not used to hearing because the last time you engaged them was in embryology first year. But it's actually very simple. We're going to separate all twins based on the number of eggs that there were, zygosity, the number of placentas that are present, chorionic, and the number of sacs that there are, amniotic. So let's go through an algorithm on how you can begin to start thinking about the different types of twinning. Now, of course, all pregnancies are going to be followed. You're going to be tracked. You're going to get a quad screen. So any abnormality is going to reflex to an ultrasound. And the ultrasound is going to show you multiple gestations. So twins do cause an alteration in the AFP. They cause size date discrepancies. And sometimes you'll just get a screening ultrasound. So regardless of how you arrive here, you're going to get the ultrasound, which will show you multiple gestations. And that ultrasound will also help you tell you what type of twin it is. The first thing you do is look at the genders. Because if the genders are different, it means that they have different genetic material, which means that they could not have come from the same egg. So if there are different genders, inherently they are dizygotic. And being dizygotic means that they are two separate pregnancies occurring at the same time. So they must be diamniotic and dichorionic. These are non-identical twins. But if the genders are the same, it's very difficult to tell non-identical twins from identical twins. And here's why. If the genders are the same, the next step is to look at the number of placentas. If there are more than one placenta, it's very difficult to tell the difference between a monozygotic identical twin from a dizygotic non-identical twin because you'll have diamniotic, dichorionic. It looks like two different pregnancies occurring at the same time. So if they're the same gender, you won't know if they are monozygotic, that is identical twins, or dizygotic, non-identical twins, until they come out. But if you have only one placenta, that is, both share the same placenta, you need to look for a septum. What you're doing is looking for a number of sacs. If there is a septum, that is there's more than one sac, then there at least must be monozygosity. You cannot share the same placenta without being split from the same egg. And because there are separate sacs, they are diamniotic. They share the same placenta, so they're monochorionic. And if there is no septum, that is they share the same sac, they are monozygotic, monochorionic, monoamniotic. So this is an overview about how you use the ultrasound to try to figure out what type of twin it is. This only matters because you want to anticipate the risk 
conferred by being a certain type of twin. And so let's talk about each type of twin one at a time so we understand what the risk is. Now, the further down you are on this algorithm, the more risk you have. That is to say, diazygotic, diamniotic, diacorneonic twins have the lowest risk. Monozygotic, monochorionic, monoamnionic have the most risk. And any risk you learn about the one above it is conferred to those below. That is, all of the risk that dizygotic, diamniotic, dicorionic has, monozygotic, monochorionic, monoamniotic has. But these guys have additional risk to the ones above. So let's talk about each one individually. Dizygotic, dicorionic, diamniotic. Non identical twins. By definition, they come from two eggs. And because they come from two eggs, there is no split at all. And because they are dichorionic, diamnionic, there are two placentas, dichorionic, and two sacs, diamnionic. They are essentially two completely different pregnancies occurring at the same time and the same uterus. Let's draw a picture of what that might look like before we talk about the risk that it confers. Here's a uterus. Here is the placenta of one fetus, placenta of another. Here is the developing fetus, the sac inside the sac. Here's the other developing fetus inside the sac. You can see that they are completely separate from one another. So the only thing that happens is that they can get in each other's way, physically. So the risk that being a twin confers is preterm labor. In fact, for every extra gestation, you subtract four weeks from the due date. So that the more twins you have, the more multiple gestations you have, the earlier the due date, the higher risk for premature birth. Likewise, malpresentation goes up. It's hard enough to get one baby in cephalic longitudinal. Now you've got to compete with space, so babies are going to orient themselves wherever they fit. So you're going to get a transverse lie, breech birth, etc. And so if you have risk for preterm labor and you have high risk for malpresentation, it's not surprising that most of these, about 50%, go to C-section. C-section because even if you have one twin in malpresentation, they cannot be vaginally birthed. So even if one gets through okay, the second one is going to have to go after for C-section. And because there's multiple placentas, the uterus has been penetrated multiple times, they're at increased risk for postpartum hemorrhage. All of these risks are converted to this twin type and all other twins we talk about from here on out. The next type of twin is the monozygotic dichorionic diamniotic twin. The only difference here is that the fertilization is of one egg. And that there was a split. And the more separate the twins are, the earlier the split. To get a monozygotic, dicorionic, diamniotic twin, the split had to occur zero to three days after fertilization in the tubal phase. There are two chorions, that is, there are two placentas and two amnions, two sacs. The risk conferred is identical to that above, except that monozygotic twins are identical.
Here's what they look like. There's going to be two placentas. with fetuses growing in them. Hopefully you can see that the two pictures are almost identical. The only difference is in the genetic material, which is why if you had a monozygotic diachronic diamniotic, you have to have the same gender. But if you had a dizygotic diachronic diamniotic that were the same gender, you could not distinguish it from this type of identical twin until they were born. As we get the twins closer together, we stick with the monozygotic and we move to a monochorionic diamniotic. This of course is caused by one egg because they have the ge identical genetic material that's split generally between days four and eight and the blastocyst phase. They have one chorion, so they have one placenta. And two amnions, so two sacs. Before we talk about the risk this confers, let's draw a picture of what that might look like. Here's the uterus. There is one placenta that feeds two sacs, each with their own developing fetus. But recognize that the blood supply for both is supplied by the same placenta. They're basically one long connection between the two of them. So it's possible for these twins to have a twin-twin transfusion. They have all of the risk of the previous twins above them, except that these twins are also at risk for twin-twin transfusion. Essentially, the placenta acts as a hose between the two of them. And in general, the twin that transfuses the other does better. Even though they come out anemic and smaller and lower birth weight, they do better than the bigger transfused fetus because the one that got transfused has a higher bilirubin load to handle. And finally, the last type of twin we have to talk about is the mono, 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 monozygotic, monochorionic, monoamniotic, amniotic. This is caused by a split of one egg. There is only one placenta and both fetuses develop within the same one sac. In order for this to happen, the split has to be late. If the split happens between days nine and 12, they're unconjoined. And if it happens greater than day 12, you will have conjoined twins. Let's see what this looks like. There's two examples, the conjoined and the unconjoined. You have to look very carefully to see this. What you're going to have is one placenta feeding only one sac. The embryos inside will be separate in unconjoined twins, even though they share the same sac and will be part of the same structure if they are conjoined. Recognize what this means. Not only do they have the same connection to the same blood supply, their cords are wrapping around both themselves and each other and each other's cords. So the risk conferred is that of all of those above, except for cord entanglement, and of course the conjoining of twins. So there's something else you need to know about twins, and that is you may diagnose a twin early on in a pregnancy. 
vanishing twin syndrome occurs generally before 16 weeks. That is, you saw two gestations and one just vanished. Don't really know the pathophysiology of that, but that is normal. So twins may become a normal pregnancy by the end of the first trimester. And what we discuss in this lecture is the different types of twinning and the risk they confer. Hopefully, you now understand the difference between dizygotic, dichorionic, diamniotic, and their monoversions, as well as how you get identical and conjoined twins and the risk that they carry. Recognize that you're going to easily diagnose this by ultrasound. Don't worry about it. What you have to do is prepare for the diseases that might occur as a result of twinning. That is multiple gestations. We make these videos for free, and we need your help. Please donate, because without your donations, we can't make any more videos. Please donate.